Let's talk about Bethesda's games and characters we create in them. Now, a workmate of mine mentioned a character that everybody seems to pick, and that's the stealthy archer. It's sneaky, a sneaky assassin that sits in the background and takes you out in one shot. And it's not wrong, because quite frankly, I like playing that kind of character too. But it's a character that takes a lot of work to build up. And, you know, it's just firing six or seven arrows into the same target uh, initially to do a half damage. doesn't really feel like it's uh, cutting the mustard. But it is a popular setup. And it's a setup a lot of people like to use. Now, my own characters, when I set along with a specific goal in man, tend to get a bit boring about level 40. Because about level 40, they have always maxed out their key skills. At level 40, I'm starting to branch out into other areas. And at level 40, that means they stop being the sneaky bowman and start being sneaky bowman archer or sneaky bowman berserker or sneaky bowman knight. And suddenly it's not the character I intended. And uh, this is the key point I'm trying to make. When you actually become a jack of all trades, you don't really focus on the skills of anything. You just use the best skills from each. When you were forced to use magic and only magic, you don't use a dagger. When you are forced to use a bow and only a bow, you won't use an axe. So your gameplay changes. The limitations you set for your character changes your gameplay. For example, many of my mods have added uh, ways of playing different types of characters. This isn't accidental. This is a plan I had because of the way I like to play. It supports my gameplay, or gameplay style. Now, if you take, say, Necromancers, which are featured in quite a lot of my mods going back to Oblivion, the spells and everything else, that is because I have actually played Necromancer characters, pure Necromancer characters. I understand the limitations and the issues and I thought about it and created support for those characters, for those people that also wanted to play those characters. Now I found uh, for necromancers for example, you might be more mainly conjuration, but the kind of characters you conjure would be all undead. You might also have uh, spells related to disease and things like that. So, or raising dead. Say so, uh, you wouldn't use a fireball, for example, or frost. You be that they would be off the table. On Dark Lord Grimlock, or Grimlock, my mod Dark Lord Grimlock for Skyrim. Um, I created a whole set of spells for for specific mage types and rewarded players that just stuck to that type of uh, spell. So if you chose to be a necromancer and you cast necromancer spells and nothing else, the mod would know it and would make you a stronger necromancer. So yeah, these, these mods were designed to support my style of gameplay where you pick a unique character and by playing a unique character you get to know everything about that character's style of play, its strengths, its weaknesses, what you can do, what you can't do, what you should avoid, what you should fear, what you shouldn't fear. It's like everything else is a progression from weak and feeble all the way through to powerful. And if you follow that progression correctly, when you get to the end game, you will know exactly why it's good to pick that type of character. Now, normal mages who are casting fireball spells, they're the most boring. Conjuration, uh, normal conjuration spells, they can be interesting. Although I find if you specialise it's better. In Dark Lord Grimoire, once you've got to a certain level in conjuration, if you've got other skills, or certain other skills, Dwemer, Dwemer spells start to appear. So you can conjure direct Dwemer constructs, which means you could go full on Dwemer. Says, but um, that you have to earn that, you have to get the things. And in that mod as well, you don't earn spells by buying them, you earn spells by casting the previous ones, and slowly as your skill improves in that spell, you're given the next one. You automatically learn it. It goes on your uh, statistics. It goes on your um, how many times you've cast previous spells and things like that. It's not something you buy. It's something you learn. 
So eventually you would learn all the spells from a particular group. It's a good way of doing it because you can balance all the other skill sets against that. It allows you to link spells here to spells here. So this one here becomes available when both of these are at the right level, which is what I did. But anyway, I'm digressing now. <laughs> but anyway, the, when you make a specific character like, say, a barbarian, you know, light armor, axe, right, or a knight, heavy armor, sword, you can focus heavily on that and really go to town on it. One of the few compromises I used to make in my characters was when I went down the night with a sword routine, I used to try and be a good smith as well. And sometimes I used to take enchantments, you know, enchanting so I could enchant them. But not all the time. I found enchanting was a bit of a cheat for that particular type of character. So uh, a lot of the time, it would what you call naked, as in no enchantments whatsoever, unless I found them in the game. So yeah, it's it's a difficult road to tread, but you have to. St you be, it's one of those situations you know, where someone says, "I don't use that site. I don't like the webmaster," but you use it under a different name anyway. Well, you can't do that kind of thing in this game, right? It says if you want to be a pure character, you have to have the the fortitude to just say no to these temptations that might change your character from what it was. Because if you if you allow yourself to get tempted and give yourself say. A healing spell when you're a, when you're say a barbarian, then suddenly you're not using potions, right? You're not using uh, ingredients. You're probably not studying alchemy. So you think about a barbarian; it's very nature driven. It's very raw, so they'll be collecting herbs, making their own potions. They won't necessarily be casting magic. So a big axe and alchemy. See, but if you think, yeah, well, I'm going to bother that. I'm going to make myself give making me a, a healing make him learn healing spells, suddenly you've not quite got the character you intended. And this is why you've got to be focused. You've got to say, when you say, I'm not going to do that, mean it. You are not going to do that. It requires a level, in a, it requires a level of restraint that most players do not have. So when you do get that character that you've chosen, be it a mage, necromancer, whatever, right? Maybe even a witcher, you know? And you want to play it, you have to play it. You have to have rules in your head that character follows when it's developing and stick to them. You can't break those rules because the second you break those rules, the second you take a skill that they shouldn't have, that character isn't what you intended it to be. Now, a jack of all trades things, they're good for learning games. But once you've learned a game, I never use them. I tend to go with specialist characters. Um, it's a bit harder with Fallout because you don't quite get the same choices. But with uh, Skyrim and Oblivion, you certainly do. And with Skyrim and Oblivion, it's well worth taking, you know, just choosing the right perks in Skyrim, you know, to encourage you to do that. Sometimes these perk trees are ass about face, if you ask me. They don't quite present the perks in the right order. So you end up... You end up needing something that you wouldn't want first in order to get the thing you do want later. And uh, I find that quite annoying. Um, it's not so bad with a with a Fallout 4 because you can just increase your stats and it unlocks all the perks and then you can pick the one you want. But um, it is a bit annoying when you when you when you've got to like say level up a sword three times. Or level up a thing three times, and you've got to take every perk on the way up to the top one. When all you want is the top one. We've they said the top one requires level 100 on a skill, and you could skip everything before it to get to it, and just just by being level 100 in that skill. But anyway, it does it does kind of like ruin the experience of making dedicated characters. That, in my opinion. But I think the attraction to character building is starting off with nothing and building it into something that represents your your initial idea, your original idea, and seeing how it plays in the end game. Trouble is, by the time you get to that level, you've usually finished all the quests, so there's nothing to do. So the trick is to do the game without doing the quests. So when you get to that level, you can then do the quests with the character and see how it performs. And that's always been the issue right there, is getting that, that balance and that timing just right. Anyway, 
Anyway, says he, uh, for those people like jack of all trades characters, that's that's okay. But I, I would suggest you're missing half of the gameplay because I can play the same game seven different ways with seven different characters and it would feel different in every single playthrough simply because I dedicate myself to certain character traits and I don't deviate off those traits. Plus, I mean, if I wanted a little delicate mage, I'd probably choose a female elf. If I wanted to be wanted a barbarian, I wouldn't choose a female elf. I'd probably pick a big chunky nod. And if I wanted a sneaky assassin, I'd pick a Khajiit. So I get to try everything, and I think that makes these games much more fun. All right, see you in the next one.